So you probably can't appreciate this on a uh, on the camera. You might be able to see it a little bit, and I might have improved it a little bit. But this is uh, the dried out guitar I was referring to a couple of videos back about humidity. This one was so dried out and and obviously been stored in a warehouse for a long time. Nice guitar, rosewood and everything, a solid spruce top. It was so dried out that this fretboard was absolutely white and looked like it was about to start cracking. And um, because the string tension had been kept on it while it was drying out, it was slightly back bowed. And of course, these classical guitars don't have truss rods. Um, I did clamp it up and try to straighten it with a bit of heat, and it did. It might have helped a bit, not much. It's still, it's still bad. Um, so this one, the only way I can make this play is either by doing a neck reset, or just putting a high saddle on it. Now this is the saddle I took off of it. Um, even with a shim under it, it's still the saddle is just too low, and, the, and particularly the. Uh, the E, it sounds fine now because it's open, but once you start fretting it, it just sounds awful. So I took the, 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 the biggest, the tallest acoustic saddle here, I could find saddle blank and put it in there just to see just how high the saddle's going to have to get. You can see that's already getting high. I've seen them higher, but it's already getting quite high. Um, you can see, you know, it's still, it plays all right on the treble end. But on the bass end, it's still uh, um, an issue, and uh, I checked the frets and everything, so it's not there's not high fret or anything down there, and the nuts all right. Um, so it's just that it's just warpage. There might be a bit of side to side as well. It's just warpage. So this is the kind of thing that can happen uh, when you have a dried out guitar. Luckily, it didn't. The belly didn't um, have any issues. Um, and normally classical guitars don't belly as much as acoustic because of nylon string pressure versus steel string pressure, um, but they can. And um, there wasn't, there hasn't been any issues inside the guitar. Uh, I haven't noticed any loose braces. I've got my hands in there and a light in there. So most of the damage seems to be the fretboard, uh, and also these keys were really, really dried out as well. Um, even with lubricant, they still feel tough and gritty to turn even though they're very pretty um, 3 by 3 classical keys um, I just think this guitar has been sitting around probably in a, in a, in a, in a warehouse with no humidity control and um, developed these issues so I have to make a choice do I um, A keep trying to manipulate this fretboard um, B do uh, neck reset or oh, actually that won't really help that much because the the problem is the uh, the way it warps up in the middle so even resetting the angle might I could I could probably get it to work but it's not really worth it with a guitar of this ilk um, it looks like it might be an expensive guitar but it actually isn't it's it's a uh, it's um, a lesser brand and this is a laminate uh, uh, rosewood back and sides and this is a spruce spruce top uh, I got compensated for the guitar, so uh, I, I'm not out any money. They actually sent me a, another one that's fine, um, that was also dried out, but didn't have any issues. So I know it's a warehouse problem. Uh, so I didn't lose any any money on it or anything. Um, I can use this for parts. I can I can um, take the neck off, which I don't think I'm going to do, or I can just um, you know get a a, a blank um, piece of uh, saddle. Uh, and just um, have an extraordinarily tall saddle on this thing and make it playable and then sell it you know cheap um, to some kid that can learn on it so um, just I just wanted to give an example I did a rather long video about humidity so I thought it would be instructive to follow that up and show how um, you know give you an actual example of uh, you know what can happen and of course had it been had it been kept in that condition for much longer, um, we may have seen some top cracking, we may have seen some uh, even cracking in the side. I think maybe the gloss finish might have helped it a little bit um, if it had been a, a spirit varnish or a, you know, a, what you call a matte finish or a, 
oil rub. Um, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't have uh, made it through. So the wood's all right. Um, you know, it's just uh, uh, the neck that became an issue on this uh, particular one. So, uh, just an example I wanted to show you so that uh, you're not just taking my word for it, you can actually see um, a guitar that has been uh, dried out and uh, had issues because of it. And by the way, it didn't look like this. I've, re I've rebuffed this out. Um, it, it was, uh, the guitar was absolutely filthy. And it was sold as a new guitar. It was filthy and the strings were black. Absolutely black. So, uh, <laughs> it didn't look like this. So if you're wondering, well, if the neck was so bad, why does the body look all right? Well, the body didn't look like this. I've, uh, I've cleaned it up and, and, and put some elbow grease into it got the grime off of it and um, you know replaced uh, the, the strings on it and everything or at least the top three um, and uh, you know it's starting to look like a guitar again but I've got to uh, I've now got to uh, adjust the saddle and um, I might even do uh, just to compensate for that slight bow I might even do a fret level uh, that might take enough of the middle frets down to where it will be level even with a slight bow. Is it worth doing that? I don't know. Well, first of all, I'm going to build the saddle up and see if it will play uh, and then make my decision on um, how much more work I want to put into it. Um, so there you go. Just an example. Hope it helps. See you next time.